Franklin's love of water indirectly inspired what he considered his favorite invention. While living in England in 1757, Franklin attended a concert in which a musician performed melodies on the rims of wine glasses. Franklin loved the sound of the vibrating glass. But being Franklin, wondered if there might be a better way to produce it. So he thought, first of all, the water tuning's got to go, way too much trouble. So if you make the glasses the correct size in the first place, then you can dispense with that, and you'll end up with a set ranging from a relatively large glass for your base end to small glasses for the high end. This would allow a musician to play complex chords in addition to single note melodies. Instead of the musician rotating his fingers, 37 glasses of varying diameter and thickness would rotate, turned by a foot-powered spindle. In 1761, Franklin unveiled his glass harmonica. Its ethereal sound created nothing less than a sensation in Europe. Marie Antoinette played the instrument. The famous German physician Franz Mesmer used the harmonica's heavenly tones to mesmerize his patients. The instrument also mesmerized a young composer. Mozart's first exposure was actually at Mesmer's house. The Mesmers and the Mozarts were, were friends. Mozart wrote two pieces for the glass harmonica, including this one. Beethoven and Haydn also composed for Franklin's instrument. Franklin himself excelled at it. He took one with him often when he traveled. He brought it back to Philadelphia. There's a story that his wife Deborah woke up one night and she heard the music of the harmonica. It was Ben practicing and she assumed she had died and gone to heaven. Despite the wild enthusiasm, the instrument's life was surprisingly brief. They eventually sort of lost out to the piano, which had come on strong by the late 18th, early 19th century. A much louder, a much more adaptable instrument to the larger and larger orchestras that were being used. The harmonica was always very much kind of a very quiet chamber-like instrument. There were also rumors that the harmonica's tones, or perhaps the lead used in the glass, caused insanity. Personally, I think they have that backwards. I think you start a little crazy and then you want to play this. Harmonica virtuoso William Zeitler has made it his mission to resurrect this unique instrument. He performs around the world and composes original pieces for it. I'd really like to get this instrument off of the endangered musical instrument list. There aren't many places to find precision tuned glass bowls these days. So Zeitler turned to Cal Glass in Costa Mesa, California, which normally makes glass scientific instruments. After being shaped on a lathe, each glass bowl is sanded until it reaches the perfect pitch. It's pretty close, too. With a new wave of harmonica players and manufacturers, this Enlightenment-era instrument may be ready to mesmerize the world again.